children's charity Kids Can says it's facing an increased need from schools to provide hygiene packs for students in low decile schools with parents unable to afford deodorant, soap, toothbrushes and so on. Yesterday we brought you the story of Labour MP Louisa Wall teaming up with the Salvation Army and the Countdown supermarket chain in a call for consumers to donate feminine hygiene packs for vulnerable young women and families in need who simply can't always afford them. But Kids Can's health manager, Julia Hayden Carr, says the issue is much wider than sanitary products. So schools came to Kids Can and said one of the things that they were really struggling with was meeting the needs of girls that were coming to school without sanitary products. So um, we've been providing them now for nearly a year and I can tell you that we provided about 4,000 packets in the last three months. 4,000 packets of tampons? Tampons and other sanitary products. And who is paying for those? Where is the money coming from for that? So we're really lucky to get um, a one-off grant from the Ministry of Social Development for that, um, for that period of time. And so um, we're just coming to the end of that funding now. So we'll be looking for more funding um, going forward. And how many schools are you working with? So we provide this to all our schools. So we're, there's now 568 schools supported by Kids Can. And because girls start having their periods much younger these days, Eight is not unusual. Um, all our schools, primary, intermediate and high schools, can um, get products off us. But in terms of hygiene products, personal hygiene, this isn't the only demand that you're experiencing, right? You've branched way beyond this. We have, and I guess what we're all about at Kids Can is, you know, education equals opportunity, and we want children and young people to be able to get to school and learn. Uh, but what schools have been telling us is that children get to school and they've got other worries, and these include personal hygiene. So no access to deodorant, toothbrushes, shampoo, conditioner, shower gel, those really basic things um, that you really need to be able to start your day and, and get to work or get to school um, in, a good, in, a good, in a good space, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, with self-esteem intact and, and an ability to sit beside people in your class, right, without someone holding and their have, nose. And so have your teacher come and look at your work. And I just, I mean, you know, you know if um, you don't have good personal hygiene. And so children are, are you know, really aware of this. So it's such an important a part of learning, I guess. So people, so these families, these homes, are so short of money that there is sometimes a lack of very basic cleanliness products like soap, like shampoo, like deodorant. Yeah, and I think that surprises some people, and, and I guess to a point it surprised me. I was like, you know, it's not that much to buy a bottle of shampoo. But then I went and calculated it, and I, I went onto the warehouse website, so we're not talking, you know, we're talking good products, but not overly expensive product. And I worked out that it's probably about 20 to $25 a term to supply a child with those really basic items um, that we talked about. And if you've got four children, that's hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. So it actually really does add up to be quite a big expense. And so you are now getting demand. Is this coming to you through the schools? Absolutely. Everything that Kids Can does is driven by schools So, needs. And this is demand through the schools for deodorants, shampoos and soaps? Yep, really basic items. And I guess the flow-on effect of these things are quite serious. Um, one of the examples that public health nurses often give to us is, you know, in New Zealand, so many children are hospitalised for skin conditions that are totally avoidable. And one of the best things that we can do around prevention is showing children how to cut their nails and how to clean their nails with a nail brush. And so that's also part of what we want to give families is a pair of nail clippers and a nail brush. And I know it's not rocket science, but it actually will reduce hospitalisation. Julia, you say, I know it's not rocket science. Every time, wherever I've worked, I've had a discussion like this with someone like you, people immediately contact us afterwards and say, what is up with the parents here? You know, this is a no-brainer. Surely cutting nails and providing soap is part of what every parent does. What's your response to that? Children don't choose who their parents are, is my truthful response to that. And every child born in New Zealand you know, has to have the opportunity to go to school and learn. And so I don't think it's my place to to say what parents should and shouldn't do. My focus is those children. Julia Hayden Carr from Kids Can.